Hello, my fabulous chemistry minions. And my students, too. Well, yeah, them, too. Ah. What up? Let's milk get rolling. This one's going to take a while. Here, Monaco there. We're going to just get to it because this is going to be long. Bear with us. It's only long because there's nine functional groups to go through. And we're doing them all in one shot. Yep. Pay attention. We want you to know about the functional groups and how that changes how we approach naming and drawing the molecules. The patterns are there for you to find in P, Q, and R, but we're going to show you what's up. Okay, good. So now, uh, if you're listening, which you should be, you might want to wait till we're done with the whole molecule, because the way we do this video, I'm going to start with what I know and get there. So, right. first thing first, halides. These are halocarbons. Anything that has a fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine into its chain. So we're starting out here. Chloropropane is the thing we want to deal with. Right. But Mr. Milks put propane up there. Because that's what we know. We know propane. So we put propane up there. Let's see how we change it to make it chloropropane. Right. So now I'm going to look on table R for that word chloro. Where is it? Oh, it's up there in the halide column, functional group dash CL. So that means there's going to be a CL at the second carbon. Right. So let's see how that would look. It would look like... Boom, boom, right there. That is 2-chloropropane, and that is what you should write down. Right. So now, just so you guys know, that's how this whole video is going to go. Yep. I'm going to start with the base molecule, and then we're going to use the functional group to add on. Cool. Okay. Next one here. Next one, we're going to go right to the one on the far right, because it looks really mad similar. Right. Except for a little bit more complicated. Trichlorobutane. So we started with butane. Yep, four carbons. And now we got to put three for tri, chlorine's in there. Right, I, I pulled up the reference table just in case we need to check. Chloro, three, CL, so we've got to put three CLs in here. Where are we going to put them, Mr. Milks? Um, it looks like one on the two, one on the two, and one on the three. So the second carbon is going to get two chlorines, and the third carbon is going to get one. Perfect. There it is. See how the map works? Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, right? Nice. So now I'm going to go and start that same process All right. Right. on this one. So first things first, base chain. My long chain of carbons, I see a one, two, and a three. Three, I do not put in this reference table up. By this point, we got three is prop. Single bonded is ain. So the end of our word is going to be propane. Correct. Now I see two different things that we haven't done yet. So that and that. So on the second carbon, I have both a branch and a functional group. Right. So I have a two... Two methyl, two chloro, propane. There you go. So maybe work, <laughs> save yourself space. Yeah, save Just yourself squeeze space. Squeeze it in there, yeah. Two save methyl, it. two chloro, propane. There you go. That's it. So this is, in a nutshell, halides. Right. Basically, there's a halogen in there. Right. The tips and tricks wise, there really wasn't anything to add. Oh, there. sorry. Yeah. It's okay. We didn't have anything to add on tips and tricks. Okay, dig it. Uh, nomenclature of alcohols. All alcohols will have an OH or a hydroxyl group on them. Right. And they Take. will always end their names in all. Yes. So, let's start. start. Okay, let's start. We got a, I see a propane is there. I see a prop and an ane. That tells me it's three carbon single bonded. That's, that's right there. And then I get this OL. Now, I don't know what an OL is. So, what I want to do is... On the example side of this reference table, I'm looking for a word that ends in OL. See how that works? Now I'm going to go across and see, yo, that's an alcohol with an OH as my functional group. So that means I have an OH in here somewhere. Okay, now according to the name 1-propanol, the OH is going to be on the base first, first carbon. carbon. Just there like that. Tips and tricks for alcohols. It looks like hydroxide, but it's not. Yeah. You're basically going to find just an OH. Hanging off the end of a covalently bonded hydrocarbon chain. Right. There's a just an OH somewhere. It could be more. an ion. No. Just an OH. So now we have to go backwards. And how did you make that go away? I no idea. Me neither. That's supposed to be the reference table. Yeah. But so we'll just go backwards now. What I see that's different in this molecule is the OH. So on your reference table, you're going to basically look up the functional groups and say, yo, what, what family has a functional group of OH? Now I know it's an alcohol. 
I'm going to look over to my right, see how my alcohol is named, and now I know my ending. Now I go back to my base pair. I got but, amine, single bonded, ending in ol, alcohol, butanol. Which carbon is it on? Right now, Mr. Monaco has it labeled as the number three carbon. But I'm wrong. But he would be very wrong. Because if I numbered it the other way, it would be on the second carbon. So we will go and default to the lowest number possible, two butanol. Right. Beautiful. Uh, tips and tricks for alcohol. Looking for just an OH. Always end in all. So if you see a chemical compound out there that has a name that ends in all, it's got alcohol functional groups in it. Yes. Period. End of story. Somewhere. Cool. And then our map is going to teach us where. Ethers. Ethers have an O in the middle of the chain. So where a carbon we would expect to see a carbon, all of a sudden there's an oxygen. And it only makes two bonds, so it kind of links two branches together. Right. And that's how we're going to name them. We're going to name the branches separately. Correct. And the last bit is we're going to say ether. Correct. In the name. So let's see what's up. Okay. Now I see in the first one it says methyl ethyl ether. Mm -hmm. To be honest with you, it really doesn't matter. But convention, I always w was taught you do the lowest letter first in the alphabet. Sure. But it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. Because so, these are two different branches. One's a methyl, one's an ethyl. Right. And if we rotate the thing, guess what? We there it ether is. In the middle. So we... with something like this, I'm looking right on a reference table. Let me find the name that ends in ether. Oh, look, there it is. There's the name that ends in ether. And so now I know I'm going to start with this O in the middle. Cool. Okay. So, bam, there's, whoops, there's an O in the middle. O in the middle. So now on one side, guess what? I'm going to have a methyl group with one carbon. There it is. And the other side, an ethyl group with two carbons. There it is. There's your methyl ethyl ether. There you go. That O in the middle is what's sticking out at us. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I like this one. You like this one? Yeah. Because I know oh, it's going to be... We're, gonna go, we're, gonna, oh, we're going to the, the yeah, butyl propyl? I, I draw them all first. Oh, okay. I draw yeah. them all first, then we name them last. Let's get good at drawing them first. So okay. ether. Ether. There's an O in the bridge. Yep. I use reference table. I R. I see it's there's an O in the middle. So I'm going to put an O in the middle. And on one side, I'm going to put a... Butyl. So but four carbons. Four carbon chain on one side. Pro propyl three carbons. And notice they end in YL, just like our side chains with our carbon side chains. Because we treat ethers as if they just have two side chains. And oxygen is right, just the main molecule, or Part the main atom, right. Okay. Okay, so ooh, here's a good one. So now we got to name this. So why don't we circle the functional group right off the bat, right? I see that that is an O in line, that's an ether. I look over at my naming structure. They all end in ether, so I'm good. And I see that it's methyl ethyl ether in my example, reminds me, name them like side chains. So I got a two carbons is ethyl, ethyl, and I have two ethyls. So we call this diethyl ether. Yes, and it will knock you out. You, oh yeah. Or we don't call it ethyl ethyl ether, guys. That's right. too much. We call it yeah. diethyl ether. Right. If you wrote ethyl ethyl ether, eh, diethyl, save yourself a couple letters. Seriously. Diethyl. For you big video game nerds out there, I used to play World of Warcraft, and I made a character named Diethyl Ether because he would knock you out. Oh boy, here we go. You such a... that's, the good, that's the good geek in you, Monaco, that I like. I All right, aldehydes. Now things are going to get a little bit tricky. Tricky. This is a C with a double bonded O at the end. Right. End of a hydrocarbon chain. Sometimes we chemists would call that a carbonyl group. Yes. But you can call it C double bonded O. I'm cool with that. As long as it's at the end of a chain, it makes an aldehyde. Correct. Okay, let's see what's up. All right, so first off, I have, I see the word looks like propane. Propanal. Propanal. So prop, prop three, three carbons, carbons, and single bond. Right. But I see the A out. So a -L. let me look up my reference table on the right hand side. Which name ends with an AL? Oh, no. Aha. AL. So now looking across, I see it's an aldehyde with a functional group of C double bonded O at the end. So guess what I'm going to do? C double bonded O at the end. So you, yeah, so you changed it. You don't have three hydrogens off that carbon anymore. No, because you can only make four bonds. You make two of those bonds turn into bonding to oxygen. Correct. And one of them stays hydrogen. Yes, sir. Nice. Okay, good. Now the next one we are going to go from the picture to the... Name. So, so, five carbons. Pent. 
Pent. Single bonded. Single bonded ain. Pent to ain. Now and circle that functional group. What's what makes it look different? Now I gotta find this picture on my functional group section in R. So let's find it. Oh, there it is. It's an aldehyde and it ends in L. So, so pent. my pentane is gonna become pentan ale. Now we don't need a number on these ones, Mr. Notes. So there's a side note because under tips and tricks, alcohols are always on what we call the um, ter ter terminal, terminal, terminal carbon. carbon, the end carbon. Aldehydes are always on the end. So by default, they would always have the number one. So we're trying to save space on our papers. We don't need to write one. Right. We only really n write the number when it could be somewhere and I need to know where it is. Aldehyde, right. bam, it's instantly one. Right. Make sure it's make sure tips and tricks you're looking for a double bonded O with an H. Right. The H tells me it's terminal. Okay. Now we got ketones. Now ketones are a lot like aldehydes. But, Normally I do the aldehydes almost, but here we go. So now it's just on an inside carbon, not the right. end. The C double bond O, the carbonyl group, is in the middle of the chain somewhere, yes. which makes it a ketone. Acetone, is engine a ketone. O N E, is a ketone. Right. That one's really useful for getting your epoxy nails off. Right, or, or even the nail polish. That's nail polish. It also sanitizes really well. So you're going to find yeah. that we're going to name it just the same way. But they have O-N-E at the end. So I'm going to lose the, a, the E. Yep. And here we go. So let's try one. I see pentanone. Pentanone looks like it came from pentane. So let's put up that pentane first. Yep. Okay. Oops. Oh. We went too fast. So now, own. Right-hand side of table R. Let's find a word that ends in own. There we go. It's a ketone. So I see I got a C double bonded O. I just got to figure out where on earth am I going to find put that C double bonded O. Oh, but it, it tells us right here. Number two. On the second carbon, we will put a double bonded O. You'll lose Bam. the hydrogen as a result. True. So they're not saturated. Saturated anymore. But again, it's not exactly a hydrocarbon anymore either. Ah, true. Because it's, it's no got oxygen involved. So if you ever see that saturated stuff, there's a great note. It better be a hydrocarbon. Or we're not even talking about saturated anymore. Cool. Let's do All this right. next example. This next one. So I see a double bonded O. Let's go ahead. Can we circle that for me? Double bonded O. In the middle. So where is a double bonded O to a C in the middle? Wow. Okay. We got a bunch of double bonded O's, but in the middle is this one right here. We see, don't yeah. Have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. There you go. Those dashes on either side of the carbon in the functional group of the ketone are those dashes right there, and it matches up really perfect. Now, if I look here at my naming structure, I see that it ends in own. Okay? And the number is just going to tell me which carbon it's at. So, I have three carbons. So, I must be prop and own. And because it's a ketone, I really don't have to do two. You can. But I know because it's a ketone, it's got to be in the middle. And the only middle carbon there is here is that one. In this example. In this example. What if this was butanone? Then I would have to tell you which card. So let's just be careful and make sure you always put a number yeah, with your ketone. We can. But so special notes. Ends and own. And it's got to be a non-terminal carbon. So it'll never be one. Never be one. Because if it was be... one, it'd be an aldehyde. Yes. And an, and an AL. Always in the middle of the chi uh, of the cane uh, of the chain. They look like keyholes to me for some reason, like old-fashioned keyhole. Oh, I get it. But so it's keyhole, ketone, it's in the middle. I don't know. Anyways, okay. lots of different ways to try and memorize this stuff. Ooh, but organic. let's move on to organic acids Ooh. because these are really, really important. Very sure. common to run into these. Yes. All right. Well, this is that coup from acids and bases. There was that one funny acid that broke all the rules. So this will, of course, generate H plus ions or H3O ions. So Mr. Monaco will write those in here in a second. All right, but we're going to go with how do we write this thing. So I see propanoic acid, and I have to draw it. So I'm going to start with my propane, because I see that there. Prop, three right. carbons. Three carbons, sing, ane, single bonded. Yep. Now I see this oic acid. So let's check out the reference table and find a name that has oic acid. There it is, and I see that there is my organic acid with my functional group. 
And so it's just a terminal C. has got a double bonded O with an OH, not just an H. It's like a combination of an aldehyde and an alcohol. Kind of is. It's like we put two of those functional groups together and we get a different functional group. Right. So here's what it would look like when I replace it. Here, this is Monaco stereo part. Ready? Whee! I like that. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I like it. It's going to look like that. Yeah. See with a double bonded O with an OH. And you can put the OH right next to it. You don't have to have a dash in there if you don't want. I don't. You won't see a dash like that on mine when I do it. So now I'm going to go to the next piece. Can we circle up that functional group real quick for me? Yep. Uh, it is what makes this guy different from a regular hydrocarbon. So I'm going to look for that piece that we just circled on the reference table. And there it is. It's an organic acid. And here's where we're going to use the hidden rules in the naming. Notice in the example, wait, in the example on table R, it says propanoic acid. And prop means three carbons. So I'm just going to count the carbons and end it in oic acid. So here I have one carbon, so this is methanoic acid. Um, tips and tricks, if you're talking about organic functional groups and the name's got acid in it, it's an organic acid. Right. This just in. Uh -huh. Some of these are dead giveaways. Yes. Others are not. Yes, so tips and tricks. It's going to have a double bonded O with an OH. One last piece, though, when we get into drawing something like this, like if I had to write out this, the structure for this our way, I would personally do it this way. I would do H and then with the coup at the end. That's how I would write that. I don't know about you. I don't. Because, like, this here, the propanoic acid, it's got three carbons. I would write this, C2, H5. Well, I can pick up that. There you go. H5 with a coup at the end. That tells me when I look at it that it's a organic acid. You got the coup. Notice when we did acids and bases, we always ended with a coup. Let's we'll see how it goes. Here we go. Next one, esters. They say they're the trickiest functional group, but I don't personally think so. Well, they got one of the toughest endings, uh, and we just got to practice and then how tricky so, can it be let's follow it through we got 08 yep we have 08 that tells you which functional group to look for right and i see the butte and i see an ethyl okay good so i know that there's going to be ethyl so two carbons somewhere there's going to be a butte four carbons somewhere else and the 08 tells me how to connect everything up right so let's look on the for the 08 on our reference table and i see that I start off with this C double bonded O with an O in the chain. Right. So let's just start with that. There we go. Okay. And then, sorry, back to the reference table. Look at how the naming is done. The methyl is the one carbon that's on the O. Yep. And the probe is what's attached to the C in the actual functional group. Okay. So see how it's attached to the name? It's attached to the functional group too. With a side chain. So when we draw this now, the butte is going to be attached to that carbon. So I need three more. Right. Now I got four carbons, including the one in the functional group. And on the other side, I'm going to have an ethyl. Two carbons. Ethyl. Two carbons. The way I remember this is the first word they show you is the chain hanging off the O side of things. Because okay. esters, we named the chains just like this. So right. it's kind of half of an ester half of uh, an aldehyde. It's kind of a weird hybrid. Again, when you start mixing these things up, you get weird results. Esters, I hope to make some for you, are smelly things. Yeah, some smell really good. And some smell, smell really bad. Really bad. Okay. All right, let's do this one next. Propyl methanoate. All right, so I see the O8. So that is automatically this functional group we're dealing with. Yep. With an ester. So let's start with that functional group. Mm -hmm. Propyl is going to be on the O side. Yep, so and three meth is going to be on the C side, and there's yep. already one C, so that's it. We just put in an H, and put three. on the propyl, and there it is. Propyl methan O8. Beautiful. All right, now let's get a name out of this one. Can we so, go ahead and circle the old functional group. When we find it on our reference table, we will see very carefully that it is an ester. And I see a methyl with an O8 as far as my name goes. 
So let's start with the base and the O-ing, right? Yep. I see one, two, three carbons in the base. So that's prop and O-ing. And then on the side I have an methyl. So it's methyl, propanoic. There are no numbers for these because, again, just like the ethers, so, they're both technically considered side chains. Right. One is just attached to the carbon in the functional group, so that's what's going to stay with the funny name at the end of the functional group. Yeah, Bert. Good. Moving on. Oh, we all Almost got two done. more done. Amines and amides, which are collectively very, very rare, but we got to tell you about them because they're on our reference tables, yep. and honestly, amines are the backbones of all the proteins in your body. True. DNA, too, right? Or Not DNA. No, amino acids. DNA codes for protein sequences. Uh, yeah, amino acids makes me think amines. Yeah. DNA codes for amino acids. Amino acids linked together to make oh, yeah, proteins. That's right. that's right. Thanks. Sorry. Yeah, I've been teaching chemistry so long. Professor! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, again, propanamine. I got a propane in there. So let's right. start with that. Yep. All right, and then we're going to take that amine and find who ends, what name ends in amine. Oh, there it is. Wow. And guess what? It's an amine. That's nice. Be careful. That's rocket science right there. And look, so now I have an N somewhere in there. Nitrogen in there somewhere. Where am I going to put the nitrogen? Well, the first carbon looks like... One propanamine. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yep, -er. prop. It's a prop with a nitrogen on the end. Yep, -er. All right, good. Let's draw the next one. Two pentanamine. So pent so, means five carbons. And amine is going to show up in there, so it's a nitrogen with some hydrogens hanging off. Nope. Yep. Off the second carbon. There it is. And now that looks like a C. It does, so it's really an N. But remember, you know, these molecules rotate in space. And yeah. when you get to the model kit lab, you'll see that. So you got to think about these things as rotating in space. Right. Now here's where things get funny. Funny stuff. And you probably won't see this too Probably often. not. But just in case, CYOA, we're going to treat this now as an amine just like we would an, est, an ester. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be an amine because there's a nitrogen. Can we go ahead and circle the nitrogen right up? Oh, yeah. All right. Sorry. All bad. It's all right. So now it's an amine. And because it's in line, it's just going to end with an amine. And I'm going to treat the other two sides as alkyl groups. Chains. Right. Hydrocarbon branches. Right. So I have two. So that is eth eth ethyl. Ethyl. And I have one carbon on the other side, so that's a methyl. Methyl. So I have ethyl methyl amine. Mm -hmm. Methyl ethyl amine. Same Either thing. way. Either way, because if I rotate the thing, it'd be the same thing. And when you rotate these in, when you're doing the lab, you'll really get a feel for what I'm talking about three dimensionally. You want to slap the amine on the end of the name for the chain, yep. so that it doesn't have three words. Right. Ethyl methyl amine. Methyl ethyl amine. Yeah. Same thing. Either way I drew that, I draw the same thing. So I, now that's how I know I'm good. Yep. -er. Now amides Super are a little rare. different. Super duper rare. This is a nitrogen with a double bonded O. It's like a carbonyl group with a nitrogen next to it. Right. And so you run into the word amide. Right. So go, uh, that's the nice thing about amines and amides. They're in their names. Right. So the only ones cool. that have the names that are a little trickier, alcohols always end in OL, ketones end in own couple others but yeah aldehyde is the weird one most no, of them just end in what they are right which is nice yeah. so i see propanamide so i'm gonna start with propane because i see that i don't see propene and i don't see propine i see propane as the as the beginning and then amide i gotta figure out what that is so let me find a word that ends in amide oh and look this functional group is just called amide and so i'm looking for this guy right there nice. so we gotta put one of those on there so with an n hanging off there it C is. C double bond O with an N hanging off of it. N makes three bonds, so we hook in those hydrogens. And this is propanamide. I don't have to tell you that it's one because it is eternal. And that being said, we're never going to replace those hydrogen with other alkyl branches. Ever. Because the names would get really complex. It would be like methyl, meth, dimethyl propanamide. Yeah, Weird I don't know stuff. that we're doing that. And we're, we're not we are, doing that. We are. We're not doing that. If you're interested and curious, go let the internet be your teacher. Sure. We're not going that far. We've We're done not. enough. This is on our ninth one for crying out loud. Butanamide it starts out as a butane, right? I, I see that the amides have the C double bonded with an O and a nitrogen in there. So I'm just going to throw that right on the end. 
keep that right, keep those carbons right in there. Four carbons with a double bonded O and an N. Yes. Now I have butanamide. Tips and tricks. This looks a lot like an amine, except for it's got that double bonded O. Right. So this was a long video because we had to do the reference table justice. Okay? Right. Where do you find your functional groups located? Table R. Table R. What elements must be involved to make a functional group? Oh. Nitrogen, oxygen, oxygen, or a halogen. Pretty much. That's, That's all it. Did. True or false? Functional groups make molecules behave a specific way. True that. True that. Naming patterns for organic compounds with functional groups are listed on table R. Again, now you can figure it out. Yes, from it's, what's slight, it's slightly hidden, but you have you have a molecule there and the name, and you can kind of work it out together to figure out how to name it. Which functional groups are you most likely to see, Mr. Milks? Um, right off the bat, alcohols. Alcohols, my head. halogens, and maybe ketones. Alcohol, ketone, halogen, organic acids. True, organic acids. Mad common. That cool. It's a coup. Cool. C double bond OH. Coup. Cool. He says coup. Cool. Cool. I don't like to say coup. Cool. I say coup. Cool. I don't like it. I don't know why. Are you a bird? I don't know. Coup, cool, coup. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. I was always said coup. Cool. That's how I knew. <laughs> Anyways, guess what? We're done with the long video. And do there's some... only two left, simple ones. Yeah, but there's a ton of practice on these. Yeah. So, guys, do your practice. Do your pogles. Get it signed off. Do your Check. lab. Make sure you're right. This is the meat of the unit. Yeah, this is. Big at, at this point now, once you're good at this piece, you can do all of it. Mm -hmm. See ya. Bye.